All right, case number three. This is a 45 year old white male chiropractor who comes in with staring spells that uh, happen not too often, two or three times a month. Really no other relevant history. His neuro exam is normal. And here's his MRI. So on the left, you see a T1 with contrast. And on the right, you see the T2. So here you have a T2 bright lesion that does not enhance. So where's this lesion? Where, if you had to pick one location, what would you call that location? Insula, so I agree. So this is an insular tumor. What's your next step? Well, before we, before we answer that, why don't we ask for a differential? What do you think this is? Insular tumor, location, T2 bright, pretty well demarcated there, does not enhance. So I see a low grade glioma, insular low grade glioma, glioma. Schwannoma. So I agree that it looks like a low-grade glioma. So that's a, a reasonable picture of a low-grade glioma. So what's your next steps? We don't think it's metastatic or infection or anything like that. So it's pretty convincing for an infiltrative lesion like a glioma. So I see a functional MRI. So this is on the right side. So you might want a functional MRI to help map um, probably motor pathways. So that's a good thought. Does anybody recognize this? What is this representing? So this is MR spectroscopy, and you'll see uh, the top part of it represents tumor. And you'll notice compared to the normal contralateral side that there's a, a larger choline peak and a smaller uh, NAA peak. And so that's consistent with glioma. Anybody recognize this? So this is a MRI spectros uh, perfusion study. I'm sorry, MRI perfusion study. And um, you have to know the color scheme because it varies from side to side. But for this one, uh, red is meant to represent um, higher perfusion. So most likely more aggressive uh, type of malignancy. So this lesion has a little bit of red in it. So that's a little bit of a red flag, worrisome. So um, this patient got a biopsy and this is the results of that biopsy. So they're IDH uh, negative or wild type. Uh, ATRX is retained, uh, positive P53, about a 10% KI67. They have a gain of chromosome seven and a loss of chromosome 10. And so that diagnosis is a diffuse astrocytoma. So kind of like the low grade glioma that we threw out there, but this one has molecular features of GBM. So the bottom line is it's, it's gonna behave like a GBM and therefore we gotta treat it like a GBM. Here's a really nice algorithm that I recommend you spend a little bit of time on it. And the bottom line is what it's telling us is there are some tumors, gliomas that we see that can look and initially present like a low grade type of tumor. But when you do their molecular profiling, they're going to have features suggestive of malignant gliomas. And we have enough data now to know that they are going to behave like malignant gliomas. And so you need to treat them like that as well. So for example, that last case I showed you, um, 
he presented with this picture of sort of a large diffuse infiltrative astrocytoma in the hemisphere. And he, um, I think he was 51 and he has amplification of EGFR, um, gain of chromosome seven, loss of 10, uh, we haven't talked about TERP promoter mutation quite yet, uh, but he had some of those features that are positive. So that puts him in this sort of category. So these things are not quite yet in the WHO classification, but they probably will in the next uh, version when that comes out soon. Let's see. Um, so I already showed you data about uh, the importance of looking at IDH. Uh, I like to show this because uh, Dr. Yan here is actually my mentor, one of my research mentors when I was training. And I've mentioned this ATRX uh, mutation and here's some of what that survival data looks like. So when that uh, gene is mutated, then survival is a little bit better in glioma patients. And I mentioned the TERP um, mutation as well. So that stands for telomerase reverse transcriptase. That's a gene on chromosome five, encodes the catalytic subunit of telomerase. Telomerase, telomerase is an enzyme that adds nucleotides to the telomeres in your cells. In normal cells, the activity of the enzyme is low, and that um, mechanism of action allows for senescence and apoptosis uh, for those normal cells. But in in tumor cells, you have abnormal reactivation of the telomerase. And that's seen in a lot of tumors, not just gliomas, but a lot of cancer. And the increase of TERD expression due to usually promoter mutations allows or contributes to this uncontrolled proliferation. So it's a major cancer uh, driver. So those molecular changes I just sort of quickly introduced to you, I. I'm sure they're gonna make their way into the next WHO classification system, which probably will come out very soon. So keep your eyes open for that. In the meantime, um, there are lots of publications uh, called uh, C Impact Now. And what that is, is uh, some recommendations from neuropathologists about these molecular uh, features. And, and those are helping to inform us about how to uh, analyze and treat these tumors. So keep an eye out for those manuscripts as well, because that's very important information about glioma biology. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.